In the previous lecture, we began our discussion on complex reactions, and I showed you how to obtain the rate law for a complex reaction in which the first step was the slow step, or the rate determining step. Now we're going to look at complex reactions yeah. in which the first step is the fast step, and the second step is the slow step, or the rate determining step. So let's look at the following complex reaction in which two NO molecules react with one Br2 molecule to produce two moles of NOBr molecules. Now from experimental results, we find that our rate law is K times concentration of NO squared times the concentration of Br2 squared. Now this guy comes from experiment. And our goal in this lecture will be to find the rate law using the second step, the slow step, and compare that rate law to our experimental rate law and see if they coincide. So, first let's examine the situation in hand. Notice our first step is now the fast step. And that means one mole of NO will react with one mole of Br2 to produce one mole of NOBr2. And this step will be really quick meaning that by the time it gets here, it's going to go back. And in fact, we're going to assume that this step, this reaction, first reaction, is at equilibrium before this reaction even begins. And we're going to assume that the concentration of this guy is very, very small. Now let's look at the second step. In the second step, notice that the reactant, this guy, is the intermediate, this guy. So the product of step one is the reactant of step two. And that means step two will be dependent on step one. And, and that's because the intermediate is part of the reactant, part of the slow step process. So the slow step is still the rate determining step. And we're still going to use this step to find our rate law. But now we're going to have to take this guy into consideration from the first step. So let's write the rate determining or let's write the rate law for our first step. So remember we're dealing with an elementary bimolecular reaction in the first step as well as the second step. So we can write our rate laws in the following manner. The rate of the first step is equal to K1, our constant going this way, times the concentration of this guy to the first power because we have a coefficient of 1 times the concentration of Br also to the first uh, power because we have a coefficient of 1 mole. Now this equals to the reverse reaction because we're assuming our equilibrium or the first reaction reached equilibrium. And so this rate equals this rate, the reverse rate. So this guy equals the constant minus 1 going this way times the concentration of this guy. Now when we go backwards, this is our reactant. So these guys are equal. All right, now we're done. Let's write the rate law for our second step, the slow step. So rate is equal to K2, our some constant for going this way, times the concentration of NOBr2, times the concentration of NO. <coughs> now, Notice that this guy appears here and here. Therefore, we can represent this guy in terms of all these guys. So let's bring the K negative 1 over and we get the following. NLBR or the concentration of NLBR equals K1 divided by K minus 1, right, times NO or concentration of NO times the concentration of Br2. And now we want to take this whole guy and plug it into our rate law for our step number two, for our slow step. We plug this guy in and we get the following. Our rate for the second step, the slow step, is equal to K <coughs> K2, this guy, times K1, this guy, divided by K minus 1, this guy, times two of these, because one comes from the second step and one comes from the first step, times this guy, the concentration of Br2 from the first step, gives you this. Now, we can combine these to get an exponent of two, and we can let this guy be some other constant, say Kc. And so our rate becomes Kc times the concentration of NL squared times the concentration of Br. 
and this is exactly what we get from experiments. Some constant k, which we can say they're equal, times the concentration of this guy squared times the concentration of Br2. This is exactly what we get from experiment, and so our rate laws do coincide. Now once again, whenever our rate law is not the first step, it's the second or third step, we have to take into consideration the intermediate guys. Because the intermediate guys will determine the concentration of reactants for the slow step. And that's why they need to be taken into consideration. So what we basically did is first we found the rate law for our first reaction, for our fast reaction, for going the forward and going backwards. And then we found the rate law for the second reaction going one way because it's the slow step. And then we basically represented the intermediate concentration as everything else and we plug that in into our equation and we found our final rate law.